We know what's going through your head. You're thinking, who in their right mind gave them a chainsaw to review? We thought the same thing. I'm Tim Johnson. You know the thing. This is the Ego CS1800. I think we've also seen the model number CS1804 around as well. Same chainsaw. Basically, it's an 18-inch, 56-volt cordless chainsaw from Ego. Now, if you don't know the Ego brand, you may have seen it in some of the larger box stores uh, where they make string trimmers, uh, they make lawn mowers, uh, edgers, blowers, make some really nice blowers. We made a stubby blower out of one of our blowers. Uh, so Ego makes some really, really cool power tools. Uh, even in, in the snow blowers up north, they, they use them a lot uh, for snow blowing. Uh, so Ego really understands the battery platform because they actually design the batteries, they design the chargers, they design the tools. So to have all that ability to understand all the technology between the chargers, the batteries, and the tools makes a big difference when you're using a tool. And after testing and reviewing many tools, we actually see that. And you can see the difference in tool companies that don't handle all the design and manufacturing of their batteries and their technology. Uh, you can see that difference when you do use a tool that's able to communicate with their battery, communicate with their charger, charge their batteries fast and safely. So Ego has that down pat. Now this 18 inch chainsaw, we're curious of how well does it work? Does it compare to a gas and gas engine uh, chainsaw? Does it compare to uh, other cordless chainsaws that we've used as well? So let's just go out and use it. We'll talk about some of the features and then we'll come back and wrap this up. So this is the Ego 56 volt 18 inch chainsaw. Uh, I think model number is CS1800. I think some model numbers like 1804 or what have you. But anyway, the 1800 series is the 18 inch chainsaw from Ego. Again, runs on their 56 volt battery platform. So let me take this battery out of here so we can play around with a little bit. Um, one of the cool things about their batteries is their, is their battery gauge. You can quickly see and identify you know, how many cells are left on it. We had quite a few cuts on this battery. You'll see here in just a moment. So quite impressed with that, by the way. Um, this is their seven and a half amp hour battery. You see it's got some, a little bit of bulk to it. Um, but anyway, they have a five amp hour, two and a half amp hour. They have different battery packs that you can buy, but uh, something like this, nice to have these bigger battery packs to get more cuts in. Uh, so again, 18 inch chainsaw runs in Oregon bar and chain. That's nice to know. So you can find that bar and chain. Should be about anywhere. It's a, I think it's an 050 gauge and uh, 3 8 uh, low pro pitch. Um, so again, a uh, little narrow kerf design, but should be able to find that, that bar and chain um, in most of your, your box stores, uh, if you will. Um, and again, uh, it's in the, the organ design provided by organ, so shouldn't have a problem finding it. Uh, one of the cool things about them is the ability to tension these chains with really uh, without thinking about it and without a scrunch. So you don't have a scrunch anywhere on this on this chainsaw, which is your screwdriver and wrench, uh, to tighten this. This handles it all right here. So basically you can back this off and you can get some ten get relieve some tension on this if you want to, or you can take it all the way off and then you can get in and clean out your tool, uh, clean it. And by the way, if you notice, typically, when we show this, this kind of the, the feature-esque side of, of the review, it's usually a nice pristine tool that's nice and pretty. And we thought, you know what, let's use this thing where we actually have some history with it. And then let's show it dirty. Let's just see how it, it gunks all up, right? Okay. So it looks real because it is. We actually just cut the majority or, or a large part of a large oak tree here in uh, central Florida. Um, so here you go. So here's the one uh, huge thumb screw, basically. Uh, to take that side cover off so no wrench is needed again we can see the um that organ bar and chain which by the way for this self tensioner you have to put this on with one screw uh, to put that on and then when you flip this bar over when you've uh, wore some of the life out and you want to flip the bar over you take that one screw out you flip it over and you put the screw from this side so pretty easy to do not not difficult whatsoever um, and then that's going to handle your adjustment um, to and fro uh, so let's take this bar and chain off and here's your sprocket here which by the way i wanted to get a look so one two three four five six tooth sprocket that's important for here in just a moment because 
This is, they're claiming 11,000 RPMs. Well, I wanted to get a, a feet per minute. So I'm gonna take the number of teeth in that sprocket, and which is six, and then I'm gonna measure six teeth, which should give me kind of a, a length, right, per revolution of we get on the chain, and then should, should be able to back into feet per minute. I'll do that here in a moment. Anyway, uh, here's your self-oiler right here, which here's something else that's interesting. So I've been using this uh, to, again, cut a large portion of a tree. You can see we've still got oil in it right there. Still got oil in the tank. And this is also sat on my shelf with oil in the tank. And usually when you do that, what do you have? You have a, whatever's under it is never gonna rust because it's gonna be covered in oil. I'm telling you, we get hardly any, if, if any residual whatsoever that leaks. I don't know how they do it, but Ego, great job on doing that. And who knows, maybe that won't last. Maybe it'll start leaking with the rest of them. But I've just been impressed with that because I've noticed that the few times that I've used it, when I put it away, expecting to see a huge puddle or at least the, uh, the rag that it's sitting on to be drenched, and it's just not the case. Um, so typical handbrake right up here, um, which will actually manually lock this sprocket right here. So you can see here, I can spin that, put on the brake, there's an actual manual lock. So that's not an electronic lock. You don't have to worry, oh, I'm using a cordless tool. Maybe it's just an electronic lock. Can I trust it? No, that's a manual lock that's actually on that clutch spool right there, locking that sprocket from turning whatsoever. So it's not going to turn. Something else of interest is this headlight right here. So you don't find that on many chainsaws. And quite frankly, I'm not sure that I understand the concept of it, but here's the light right here. Um, who knows, maybe you're cutting chain, cutting wood at night. I, well, I guess that's not a bad idea if you're needing to cut a, you know, a limb off your roof in the middle of the night because it's storming and uh, you gotta you know, get that off your roof before it hurts something else, then it might be a good idea. But anyway, it's got a headlight on it. So if you've ever thought, man, I wish I had a chainsaw that had a headlight, this is your chainsaw. Uh, something else that I noticed on some of the first renditions of the Ego chainsaws, I've been, look, I've been actually re reviewing these for a couple of years, uh, they did not have these metal bucking spikes, and I kind of did not like that. They had just some plastic ones, which eh, it was fine for kind of occasional loose use, but anybody that uses a chainsaw a lot comes to actually lean on their bucking spikes. They actually use those. I use those. I buried it into the wood, get a good grasp on it, and, and be able to, to bury that and, and to move that blade, not just bury it, but move that blade and, and actually work your wood. So I like to see those metal bucking spikes, not just plastic ones. Another great thing about this tool, a lot of the cordless chainsaws when they started coming out, even the nicer ones, uh, they had electronic buttons that you had to engage or start or something before you could pull the trigger and engage the chain. And a lot of times if it sat for longer than say 10 seconds, you had to re-energize the button again before you could pull the trigger. This is very, I guess I should say pro focused or uh, non-amateur focused because basically just like a gas chainsaw, you release the, the thumb lock button here that allows you to engage the trigger and you're off. As long as your hand breaks off, as long as your battery in, battery's in, when you pull that trigger by engaging that, that lock there, it's going to spin the chain. So I, I really like that. Now, if you're a beginner, get used to that because the difference is Typically you hear an engine running in a gas saw. You're not gonna hear that in an electric saw. So when you pull that trigger, it's going to go. Again, that's the positive and the negative to that is if you're a beginner, be careful with that because once you pull the trigger, it's gonna work, but you're holding a chainsaw. So you should be having some caution anyway. Uh, here's the oil tank here. I do like that you have a translucent design here. So I don't have to open up that to see whether I've got oil in here or not. I can easily see that where my oil level is uh, and then easily take this off as well without any tools. Uh, again, they're kind of taking that approach of kind of the, the easy use scenario, try to keep from having to use tools uh, to, to use your tool. Okay, so I've got a six tooth sprocket. I've got a chain here with some teeth on it. And so let's measure from beginning of tooth to end of tooth, six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like four and three eighths of an inch. So let's take uh, four and three eighths, the so 4.375, and multiply that times 11,000. That gives us 48,125, and then let's divide by 12. So that should give us 4,000 feet per minute. 
So 4,000 feet per minute. And then let's divide by 60. So that's uh, right at 67 feet per second is uh, basically chain speed there. So that would be our chain speed. Um, so I know a lot of times you'll see chainsaws at RPMs and you also see feet per second, feet per minute. And so there you go, 66.8 feet per second is the chain speed. Okay, so let's get this back together really quick. Let me clean this goop out, at least the majority of it. Let's get it around our sprocket. So you want this dowel right here to go in this hole here. And then you just want to tighten this down and it will auto tension that chain. So now our chain is tensioned. And by the way, to redo that, or let's say it gets a little bit loose, instructions right here says unlock and then tighten again. That's all you have to do. And that will retension the chain. So basically you just tighten hand tight and that chain is nice and tensioned again. And then again, it, it should, should be very easy to reset the tension on that blade. Now all you gotta do, stick your battery in there. And then take off the handbrake. Again, push our button. and you're ready to go. Here in Central Florida, we're still getting thunderstorms regularly. Now they're not daily, but at least every other day, we're getting some type of precipitation. And usually when we do get rain, it is pretty heavy thunderstorms. Even if they only last an hour, two, three hours, we still get real heavy downpours, lots of lightning, and typically a lot of wind that comes with that as well. Well, my neighbor the other day walks out and he has a huge limb laying down in his uh, backyard. So. I looked over, walked over, said, hey, uh, what are you gonna do with that? And he said, well, actually, we're about to leave. We're going on vacation for a week, so I guess it's gonna sit there. I said, you know what? No problem, I got a chainsaw that I need to review anyway. You mind if I cut it up? He kind of looked at me a little crazy, like, do you mind if I cut it up? And anyway, so we actually took the Ego chainsaw over there and we did a good deed. We not only tried out the chainsaw, but we also cleaned up the entire yard, it worked really, really well. Now I'm going to continue to run uh, this footage as we were cleaning it up and making cuts and that sort of thing. But, um, and we'll just kind of put it up here on the top. But, uh, but anyway, just a little bit about this uh, big oak tree, typical Florida oak holds a lot of water here in central Florida. Our oak trees, a lot of times people call them water oaks because they just hold a lot of water, very wet wood, um, likes to eat up blades pretty good as well. But we took the, the 18 inch ego, and we made our cuts with it. Now the first cuts were on the bigger side of the trunk, if you will, or the, the larger part of the branch where it connects to the trunk. And those on the big, big, big spots were 14 to 16 inches. Now, and then that tapered down to probably about 12 inches, but still they were big size pieces of wood. I made, I believe right at 11 cuts with the five amp hour battery and that consumed that battery. Uh, but again, I was just, you know, going as hard as I could. You see it cut out a couple of times. I don't know if you see where I let off the trigger and start the trigger again. That's where it actually, I buried it a little too hard and it cut out. But the nice thing about this tool is a lot of other cordless chainsaws, when that happens, you have to do like a re-engagement of, of a power button or something like that. And sometimes that might take a couple of seconds and it just gets really irritating. With this saw, it's like a gas engine, except you don't have to re-crank it, let off the trigger, grab it again, get the chain going, and you're, you're back at it. So it only takes a second or two to do that. There's not a lot of irritation of having to grab another button. And once you get that feel for it, by, by the time you've made that 20th cut, you kind of know where that pressure sensitive uh, uh, area is, and you can really you know work that blade how you need to and to continue cutting without it going into that cutout. Also, once you get to that four and six inch stuff, it'll cut through that really, really quickly. Now I know if you're in other areas where there's hardwoods, things like that, again, you may have a different kind of sensation of, of where that cutout happens. But again, I think it's gonna do just fine with cutting. Uh, the 18 inch Oregon bar and chain did very well. Uh, like I mentioned in the features, uh, uh, 050 gauge, um, uh, three eighths pitch, low profile, 
Um, so, you know, it's got kind of a narrow curve design on this, but it works very well with this system. Um, the five amp hour battery, again, gave us 11 cuts, but then I put the seven and a half amp hour battery on. I wish I'd have started with this, but I really wanted to show the 5.0 because that's what you can get this tool paired with. So back to the seven and a half. And I made the rest of the cuts, which was well over a hundred. But again, we were out of the big stuff and now we were to your typical, you know, two, three and four inch uh, uh, branch cuts then. And we made well over a hundred cuts and I still have more than half the battery left. So, you know, depending on which battery you use, going to determine how many cuts you get as well as how big of stuff you're going to cut. And that's got a very exponential um, effect on the battery and the number of cuts is how big it is. Because you have a lot more surface area on a big, just because you grow a, you know, an inch doesn't mean it's just an inch. You, there's a lot more surface area uh, involved in that one inch of diameter. So again, you know, if you're cutting smaller stuff, you will get hundreds of cuts. I, I think Ego says three up to 300 cuts uh, on a 500 amp hour battery. That's probably on like four inch wood. And I totally believe that. But that's again going to be determined why what kind of wood are you cutting but just wanted to be honest with you guys 11 big cuts uh in in that oak tree with the 50 amp hour battery but did the rest of everything else with the seven and a half amp, amp hour and still have well over half so my point is if you have two batteries you can go quite a ways on a tree even if it's a large tree did very very well even to the end uh it didn't consume a lot of oil i had the barn chain oil in there i probably had half a tank maybe um, it did not consume all of that and as i mentioned also one thing i noticed is it doesn't leak anything now maybe that will happen over time um, but who knows now this tool you can get for 239 dollars bare tool so no battery just the tool bar and chain 239 bucks for 349 you get it with the 50 amp hour battery and a charger and the tool bar and chain. So I'd say that 349 is a lot better deal when you're getting the charger and the battery with that with the, for 110 bucks difference. So by all means, get the kit. Also, what it gives you the ability to do is step out into their string trimmer, lawnmower, blower line. Their blowers and string trimmers are amazing. Their mowers are good as well and, and maybe even amazing, but I'm just saying, as far as a battery power tool, I don't think you'll pick up a better string trimmer and blower uh, than, than Ego's tools. Check out their chainsaw as well, really good chainsaw. You don't have to worry about gas and mixing oil and everything else. So uh, you, whether you're a shop owner, homeowner, uh, whatever you are, to have that uh, battery powered chainsaw, it's very nice. You pull it off the shelf, put the battery, slam the battery in there and, and go to town, uh, make your cuts like we did. Uh, hey, again, check it out. It's the Ego CS1800 or the Ego 18 inch chainsaw. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you like this video. Also that bell notification, that's gonna notify you when new videos are available. Have a great day and go out and do something nice for someone.